All right, well, if you have your Bibles, we're going to open up to the book of Acts. We continue on in the book of Acts, now in chapter 8. So a number of years ago, there was a magician who was concerned. Uh, he was an, a, an illusionist, magician illusionist. He was concerned that the state of his craft in America was getting stagnant. Um, all magic is really, you know, the magic shows, and I've never been to one, but all it is is a lot of cleverly devised tricks. Uh, and it, you see it and you think, how, how could that possibly d be done? There's no way. But then if you learn the secret, it's kind of disappointing, uh, but also inspiring how, how clever it is, how they, they put it all together. But he was concerned because at this time, the internet was starting to arise. And he forecasted correctly that with the, the rise of the internet, there would be a whole lot more information out there, and people would start to figure out how their tricks were done. And so, in a way to kind of try to wake up um, the magician community that had become stagnant and they weren't having the conversation about continuing to push their craft further and so forth, uh, develop new tactics for producing similar uh, illusions, he went on a ser series of television specials to reveal how tricks are done. Um, and you can imagine this made a lot of magicians really, really angry. Because some of them had paid $50,000 for the secrets for how to do a trick. And now, people are figuring out how it's done, or at least one possible means of producing this illusion. And so this guy received a lot of hate from, I think the regular people enjoyed it, because then they could figure out, oh, that's how it was done. That's really clever. That's really interesting. But he received a lot of hate as he was exposing the secrets behind this so-called magic. People tried to sue him, and he had problems left and right. But he really had a, a good intention for why he was doing it. Nobody likes to be exposed, um, let alone magicians. None of us like to be exposed. But today, as we, as we read in Acts chapter 8, I want to look at a story about a, a magician who himself was exposed, but not in the way that we're, we've just mentioned here. You'll see what I mean in a moment. But we start in Acts chapter 8 and verse 1, and it's really just a continuation of the story we finished last week with the martyrdom of Stephen. It says, now Saul was consenting to his death. Stephen, the first Christian martyr, died there, and it says Saul, he not only held the coats, as we saw last week, the, the outer garments, but he approved of it. Two thumbs up. Not because he was a cruel-hearted person, but because he believed he was doing the right thing. And it says after that, at that time, a great persecution, intense persecution, arose against the church, which is at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except for the apostles. It's interesting that the, the, the persecution and the attacking of the Christian church actually resulted in what? Further scattering the good news. It, instead of beating it out, it actually spread it. It's like a grease fire. Uh, if you're not careful, you can make it spread even further. And that's what was happening to the flame of the gospel. It was scattering outside of the bounds of Jerusalem and now going into Judea and Samaria. But you'll notice it says that the apostles were not scattered. And there have been various reasons suggested for why this might be. It may be that they just were very determined to stay there in Jerusalem. Uh, but I think more possibly, the, the persecution seems to be aimed predominantly at these Hellenistic converts or these Greek-based, um, Greek-speaking, Greek-cultured converts to Christianity because they were the ones that were perceived as the greater threat to the religious leaders. Um, remember, Stephen, he was of the Hellenist group. He was not a Hebrew by, by birth. He grew up in another part. He spoke a different language. Uh, and they felt more threatened because uh, the, the, the disciples and the apostles, they were still going to the temple every day. 
They were still uh, entrenched in a lot of the Jewish traditions and cultures. Uh, but the Hellenistic Christians, they weren't attached to the temple uh, in that way. And so this persecution seems to be more specifically directed at them. And it says they were scattered. But then verse 2 says, And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made a great lamentation over him. This is no insignificant point. It was actually illegal in their law to bury with honor a person who had been a convicted criminal. And Stephen, because of his preaching of the good news of Jesus, he was a convicted criminal in their eyes. But yet there were certain devout guys that had the boldness to take that body and to go bury him. And then it also says they made what kind of lamentation? Great or loud lamentation. Now, we don't do this as much here in America, but over in that part of the world, this involves wailing, mourning, you know, going through the streets with this loud cry. But these guys were so convinced that this righteous man, Stephen, deserved it, that they were willing to risk themselves, even while the people who had killed Stephen were still in the same city. As for Saul, verse 3, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. Uh, the Greek word there for havoc is used in the Greek translation of the Old Testament, and it's used in reference to uh, the effects of a wild boar that's just like going on a rampage. Uh, Sarah and I have learned recently that wild boars can be very, very dangerous. Uh, not experientially, we, we learn this uh, elsewhere. So this is just like, he's going through towns and through homes like a wild boar, just snatching out people and committing them to prison and whatever fate lay after that. Therefore, verse 4, those who were scattered went everywhere doing what? Preaching the word. Again, Satan's trying to stamp out the good news of Jesus and the truth of Jesus. This young Christian church and his effort to do that only makes it spread. Jesus said, start in Jerusalem and then proclaim the gospel to the next area, to Judea, to Samaria. And the persecution is actually helping fulfill the gospel commission. You know, this whole quarter we've been studying in our Sabbath school lesson about these crucibles or these difficult times, and it helps remind us that the difficult times can actually have really good effects in our life. Uh, the church was going through a crucible, but God was using it, uh, this bad, and he was using it to reach more people. And then it says in verse 5, there was a guy named Philip. Now, this is not Philip the apostle. This is Philip we might call him a deacon, although technically it doesn't call him a deacon in Acts 6. Uh, he also was called Philip the Evangelist. Uh, but Philip goes out, it says in verse 5, as before. Simon, the greatest of the great. He's picturing the, the new anthems, the new slogans that could be chanted in his name. And he didn't receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Apparently the, the apostles recognized he wasn't ready for this. There was something that wasn't quite right in his heart. And so Simon the magician exposed himself through his actions and through his words. Not his tricks, but the secrets of his heart. Where was his heart truly? He offered them money, saying, verse 19, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. He didn't want this gift so he could bless others. He wanted this gift so that he could enrich himself. He could advantage himself. And Peter recognized this. Verse 20, he said to him, your money perish with you because you thought the gift of God could be purchased with money. In other words, let the silver that's in your hands, uh, let it be destroyed uh, and perhaps along with you because the gift of God can't be purchased. You cannot buy the Holy Spirit. You cannot buy the favor of heaven. God loves us already. But you can't purchase the gifts of God. Verse 21, you neither have part nor portion in this matter. In other words, you don't, you don't understand or 
you don't deserve to receive the Holy Spirit. Why? For your heart is not right in the sight of God. Simon the magician, he had a heart problem. His heart was not right. So Peter says to him, Repent therefore of this, your wickedness. Peter didn't see him as a lost, hopeless cause. Repent and pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. Notice he mentions the thought of your heart, the intentions, the motives of your heart. Peter saw through um, Simon's request. He didn't just want to be an apostle to bless others. He wanted this for himself, to make himself greater or more wealthy, etc. Repent therefore. Turn away. Maybe the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see, verse 23, that you are poisoned by what? Bitterness and bound by iniquity. Enslaved to sin. And this phrase here, poisoned by bitterness, is really an interesting one. I want you to keep your finger in Acts and go back to the, to the fourth book of the Bible, or fifth, I'm sorry, the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 29. Peter, of course, all he had reference to as far as sacred scriptures were the Old Testament at this time. And we find that these same Greek words, uh, the poison of bitterness, are used here in, in Deuteronomy chapter 29. Deuteronomy 29, and we'll look at verse 18 and 19. When you're there, you can say amen. amen. Deuteronomy 29, verse 18 and 19. God is giving a warning here. He's given some curses that would fall upon people who, who ignored the covenant um, that he was giving them. It says there, So that there may not be among you a man or a woman or family or tribe whose heart turns away today from the Lord our God to go serve the gods of these nations. So when your heart turns away, it leads to you serving other gods. What did Simon have a problem with? His heart. His heart was not right. Uh, and his mind as well. Mind and heart are, are kind of synonymous in some ways. And it says, so that there may, be, may not be among you a root bearing bitterness or wormwood. And in the original language, this is the same word. that's being the same two words as the ones that Peter used. And notice the next verse. And so it may not happen when he hears the words of this curse that he blesses himself in his heart, saying, I ha shall have peace, even though I follow the dictates of my heart, as though a drunkard could be included with the sober. In other words, God was saying to the people, I've given you some stern warnings here, but let there not be any among you that has been poisoned by bitterness or the bitterness of wormwood, uh, saying to themselves, I know God says I should do this, but I'm going to do something else anyways, and I'm going to be A-OK. -okay. I shall have peace even though I follow the dictates of my heart. And isn't that essentially what Simon was doing back in Acts chapter 8? Yeah, I know, I know that this gift is meant for a certain purpose, but I've got some other purposes why I want. I know this Jesus fellow, you know, he's got some things that he said, but I have some other ideas on how I can look after number one. And Simon, through his words and through his actions, exposed himself. What really mattered to him. When he heard about this, this serious uh, response that Peter gave back in Acts chapter 8 verse 24 it says then Simon answered and said pray to the Lord for me that none of the things which you have spoken may come upon me it was clear that he was afraid but it wasn't clear that he was repenting he just didn't want the consequences to come on him church tradition that's the last part that, that the Bible says about Simon but church tradition says that Simon went on to become a real enemy of Peter and the church. Uh, even going to, uh, as far as Rome to preach against what Peter 
was teaching. And there's all sorts of legends and, and, and stories. It's unclear to what extent they are true or untrue. But, but they're all clear in this idea that Simon went on to become a real enemy and leader of a movement against the movement of Christianity. Verse 25, as we close out, it says, So when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, this is the apostles, preaching the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. Now we see the apostles also starting to preach in the Samaritan territory. They say that actions speak louder than words. So what did Simon's actions and his words say about himself? It said his heart wasn't in the right place. As we close this morning, I just have to ask a question. What do your actions and your words over the last week, what do they say about you? What do my words and my actions say about me? What does God want to say to us in our hearts? I think there's always room for looking back with joy. Uh, but I think if we're honest, we can look back and see areas where God wants to encourage us to do better this next week. To be more surrendered, more committed, more dedicated, more earnest in seeking after God, his word, and our mission here on this earth. I want to learn from the, the lesson of Simon, uh, and I want to look forward to this week uh, to growing in the, in the grace and the experience of Jesus. How about you? Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, I am grateful that even when we make mistakes, even when we have bad motives, bad actions, bad words, that your forgiveness is is immediately available to us as we ask for it. Jesus, you already died on that cross for us. Provision has already been made. And we thank you for that gift. We also ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit in increasing ways so that we can do more of your will this week. So that we can more reflect your character. So that our hearts can be more closely united to you. And so that we can better Carry out the mission that you have for us as joyful Christians in this world. Lead us and guide us, and we thank you for calling each one of us. Let every disciple of Jesus say, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a happy Sabbath, and join us for potluck if you can. In any case, we will see you soon. God bless.